welcome. Uh, uh, we have been discussing the heritage significance. In our last lecture, we discussed about the heritage significance values and how it can understanding the heritage significance and value, how it can also lead to the conflict resolution. We will continue today with uh, the significance, but the process of significance. So, again just to have a recap, uh, what we discussed even that uh, stone in Australia, we talked about that how understanding the values and significance led to a proper conflict resolution between two groups conflicting. So, what does the significance mean? Significance refers to the values and meanings that items and collections have for people and communities. Significance may also be defined as the historic, artistic, scientific, social or spiritual values and uh, that items and collections have for the past, present and the future generations. These are the criteria or the key values that help to express how and why an item or collection is significant. So, we have discussed several cases to convey the different types of values what we have told just now. So, now if we have got a good idea about that what is the significance and values, we have to also understand that how do we assess the significance because uh, again I told you many times that the subjective they say I like it or it has got a value has no meaning it has to be very objectively assessed. So, what is the uh, significance assessment? It is the process of researching and understanding the meanings and values of the items and collections and these items and collections can be of varied types. So, it needs a, a, a proper understanding and it explores all the elements that contribute to the meaning including history, context, provenance, related places, memories and comparative knowledge of the similar item. So, uh, we will ex take each of this term and we will explain that what it means in relation to some items and collection of items. And Finally, under, after researching and understanding in a proper way all these various aspects of items or collection of items, it can be building, it can be a singular ob artifact or objects, it actually the process is to explain why and how the item is important and what it means. This is absolutely important because that is the objective of this research and understanding, why and how. And finally, the result of this analysis are synthesized in a statement of significance. This statement of significance is what? It is uh, not a score type of thing. It does not give a value in a sense of uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 or certain score value. It is not like that. But ultimately, it has to lead to a statement of significance and today we will discuss with several cases that what this means the statement of significance and what is the process of achieving that. Because that actually will uh, lead us to that how and whether we should conserve something from the past. Now, just to take an example of this chair, this is from Australia. This is just a stump chair, it looks like a made out of a, a wooden block. And this is, this is an example which we will talk about that what is the significance uh, of these and how that is expressed in a type of statement. I will just read out this part that what is written there because it is not very legible. So, th how the, what is the statement saying? This is one of the most significant items in the collection and also one of the oldest and most vulnerable to decay. It represents the foundation moment of the Catholic Church in Bendigo, a place in Australia, the earliest European institution to operate in that area. So, this is an institution in a particular area where the uh, settlement uh, started of the white Europeans in Australia and as is highly historically significant. So, it is historically significant because this is a place where the it is related to the Catholic Church in Bendigo. 
it was used at when the Victorian gold rush had just begun. If you know the, in the history of Australia, there was a gold rush. So, a lot of immigrants were there, a lot of convicts were who had uh, um, brought down there and then there was a gold rush for which a lot of uh, changes happened. So, when uh, Backhouse first arrived there in the population of the Sandhurst, which is a place was population was around 15,000, most of whom had arrived in the six month since the discovery of the gold. It demonstrates the very rough and basic conditions and humility and courage of missionary priests like Backhouse, who were determined to bring word of God to the people in the most remote and the rugged areas. So, this is what is significant in that it is talk about who are the people, who are the institution, where did it happen, what time it happened and what are the various events, not in a very, very elaborate way, but very precisely and very comprehensively it talks about. So, this is the statement of significance. So, the significance of assessment that means there is a process. So, we will now discuss what is the how the introducing the significance assessment process. So, significant assessment is the process of researching and understanding the meaning or values of items and collection these I have already mentioned. So, there are three variations of the process of assessing the significance. Let us see what are the three uh, variations. One possibility, the first possibility is it can be for single items. The second, it can be for collection or parts of a collection. Third, for cross collection of the project. So, as you can see that it makes a sort of a pyramid. So, at the top we see a single item and then we see a collection of specific themes or part of a collection. So, it can be a part of a collection or it can be thematic based or see the cross collection projects that is the thematic studies or it can be the regional surveys or it can be the collections mapping. So, let us take one by one and we will try to see that what these three uh, variations uh, mean for the process of significant assessment. Let us take this example. Uh, this is a very famous uh, piece of sculpture which is known as Didargan Yakshi in the Patna Museum look at it. It is made out of a simple piece of marble stone and almost more than 6 feet high and it was discovered uh, by uh, chance in a place called Didarganj and that is why it is known as the Didarganj. Uh, there is a controversy about to uh, what time historically it belongs to, but most of the people say it is during the Hoshokan times. It is a beautiful sculpture with all the details of folds uh, of the uh, cloth, uh, the drapery, the ornaments and other. It is almost uh, un, uh, sort of uh, not damaged at all and it is a beautiful piece of object. And this is almost a remarkable piece in the Patna Museum. Uh, so, this is an example of a single item uh, for which the assessment can, can be done. Another example can be the is a cannon. It is in Vishnupur, the Dal Madal cannon. It has uh, is now positioned in the near the Terracotta temples of Vishnupur. It has also got a historical significance because it sort of uh, um, helped the kingdom there to uh, win the battles and to protect them. It is uh, very uh, a lot of historical significance this piece of uh, uh, weapon or the uh, which is placed there. And uh, so, this is again an example of when we are talking about the sig single uh, object. If you talk about a building, we talked about Shamuli earlier in Shantiniketan, uh, which is also can be a, a single building in a larger complex, uh, which also we have discussed earlier in earlier lectures that why it is important. It is important because it is a adobe structure which uh, Rabindranath Tagore experiment with. He lived there and Gandhiji also came and met him and stayed there for some time. So, it is a very important structure. So, these are some of the example. It can be a sculpture, it can be a, a manuscript, it can be an art object, uh, it can be a sort of a, like we have seen the cannon, it can be any type of a weapon or it can be a, a small structure also. 
So, these are examples of the single items. Let us talk about when we are talking about the second variation for collection or parts of a collection. We will talk about a temple, a very unknown temple, it is not an ASI or state listed project, it is an unlisted project uh, temple in, uh, uh, in Midnapur district, which is the Rash Manchur. Uh, this is the Rash Manchur in a place called Shamshundarpur in East Midnapur in West Bengal. Now, when we are talking about this small structure, they are very, very parts are the parts of which are is a terracotta temple which are very important and is comprised the significance of that temple. Not only the temple is important or the rush monch or the structure is important, but all these various parts. For example, if you see this part, this is a sort of um, the in a terracotta the inscription is there which talks about the date when it was done, who did it and it is uh, and in it is really uh, staying in a undamaged condition and it is very important piece not only aesthetically, but historically because it is a piece of document. In addition, there are a lot of other and you can see the terracotta uh, murals are there and the tiles are there with a lot of stories and myths written, but in addition to that there is some uh, sort of a, um, uh, sculptures are there. Uh, which are there and you can see the influence like it is on the top of the Rashmanch is almost here and it has got a strong European influence. You can see the hat. It is of course damaged by different types of moss and fungus. Uh, this also has been damaged. It is a very strong European influence and it is very surprising that in the far away place in a village that how this influence came and got sort of uh, imprinted in the design of these terracotta tiles. Uh, of course, this is again damaged by human, um, uh, the man, you know, the people come visit and they sometimes cause some damage to the structure, but still it is quite beautiful. Also, another part is that this uh, within the Rashmanchu, because there is a small wooden um, sort of a structure uh, which can revolve uh, because it is for the celebration and the idols of Krishna used to be brought there and it is to be rotated and there are many many other things. So, it, this is a collect uh, an example where a collection or parts of a collection are significant to uh, denote the significance or contribute to the significance of this small structure which is a Rashmanchu. We can see various types of that like this is the Bichar Utensil Museum in Ahmedabad, uh, which is an utensil museum and where the utensils of different types, different material, different time period are stored there. So, the significance of this museum are contributed by the different types of artifacts. So, it is the collection of all these different types which contribute to the significance of this museum. So, each and every one of this piece of item is very significant. So, this is the second variation where collection of specific themes and here the theme is the utensil. So, the collection of the various themes, um, various objects contributed to the theme uh, contribute to the significance of this museum. Let us talk about again going back to Shantiniketan, Uttara and Shantiniketan, West Bengal, uh, which is in the same complex as we have seen this is Shamuli uh, in the Udan complex of Shantiniketan, where uh, Rabindranath Tagore uh, had a lot of structures where he stayed and uh, they are uh, in that complex. So, now if you talk about only this building which is the Uttarayan, uh, then we, what we can see is that in that there are many many things which itself they are independently individually are very important and contribute to the significance of this, uh, this building. The building itself is very important because of his architectural style and other. So, what we can see here, we can see the interior, the living room, which has actually marked a change of the um, uh, conscious uh, design, uh, which was brought by Rabindranath, Obanindranath that time. And they were trying to evolve a type of design, which is uh, taking from the traditional ethos of the Indian architecture and also the contemporary living style. And uh, so, this uh, very, very uh, low storage and the color combination, the design items and other. This is a car which was used by them and the car is kept there and this is also has a historic significance. Then there is a, an entrance door which is strongly influenced by the Japanese architecture 
and the, there are details of also very influenced by the in traditional Indian architecture. There are the uh, copies of the murals, Sajan Taylor murals. So, each and every item of that, the furniture, um, the cartons, the drapery, the car, uh, the design of the gates, each and every item and also the garden, they all contribute to the significance of that. So, it is a very good example for a collection of parts of collection, the second type where we can see that it is uh, when we see them in together and also independently, they contribute to the significance of that. So, this is the second type of variation. The third one is that when for cross collection projects, the significant assessment. So, cross collection projects that is the thematic studies, regional surveys or collection mapping. I have taken an example which is uh, Mujiris heritage project. This is uh, located in Kerala near Kochi. And this is uh, now becoming a very important part because this is the part where the traders from all over the world, the maritime traders used to come and settle there, Arabs, uh, Chinese and uh, even from far away countries like Greeks and Rome and uh, they used to come there and settle. So, there are the trade linkages and there are many, many archaeological uh, excavation which have been carried out and which signifies the linkage, the maritime linkage and the trade linkage of this place and uh, this is a cross cultural things which happen there. So, there are many types, many monuments, there are arch archaeological sites and the very landscape that illustrate a significant era in the history of Kerala. So, it is spread in a regional type and a very many times and uh, which it is all of them contribute along with the built heritage, the artifacts, the natural heritage, the archaeological sites, all of them contribute to uh, signify the Mujiris heritage of that time. For example, there are the churches, there are uh, which are now converted into museums, uh, there are the different buildings, they have a very strong Kerala influence, but also there is a cross cultural uh, manifestation influence of the manifestation. There is a synagogue, um, the Jews came there as a trade and settled there. So, like this one is the Abdul Rahman Shai Museum, the Islamic History Museum, they are now converted into a museum, and the Paravu Jewish Synagogue Museum, all are there and they are spread in a region along with the water body and uh, the natural landscape and the different types of community, their uh, places of worship, their architectural style, all of them contribute to a cross collection projects because this shows the, the how the different uh, religions and different culture from far away places and they are also have found the Roman coins and other, they have uh, uh, sort of contributed to the made of the Mujeri style. So, this is an example of the cross collection projects based on a thematic studies or regional surveys or the collections mapping. Now, so if you see the process and if you just try to sum up, so what is the different stages? So, first stage as we can see in this process is a research and analysis. The research and analysis uh, the, uh, the item or collection as we have seen it can be single object. Research includes provenance, context and consultation compared with similar items or collections. This leads to this research and analysis leads to the significance or what makes it important. Drawing on the research refer to the criteria and summarize the values and meanings in a statement of significance. Then what comes next? Based on this statement of significance, we have to identify the policies, strategies and recommendations to conserve and communicate the significance because it is not enough to know the significance, but we have to communicate and it has to be manifestation in some strategy and policy for conservation. So, based on that taking action undertake management and implementation. So, you see that the statement of significance leads to that what we are going about, uh, how what we are going to do about this things which are significant and for what. Then after this is implemented also then we have to monitor because it is a continuously evolve, evolving process, it is not a static process. So, it is a very dynamic process. So, monitor and review actions in the light of the values and meanings 
in the statement of significance and new information because gradually when new sites are excavated or new uh, uh, information is achieved. So, the information go on building up and we can sort of have to change our interpretation of the site likely that there will be some changes new information coming up and other. Now, this again will go to the go back to the significance uh, because if some new site is excavated. Uh, as we can see in New York, the, uh, the Viking village was excavated there and it contributed to a more understanding of that. So, it goes on and we have to understand this dynamic nature of the significance and it again will go back to the research analysis. So, this uh, is very important to understand that uh, what is the process of significance and what it leads to. Just to take a recap of the various stages what we have done. Uh, we say the significant assessment process first you have to collate a file and then research history and for items the provenance which we will discuss uh, in our next lecture. The review the scope and themes arising from the research for collection because themes comes from the understanding and getting the various information. Then consult the knowledgeable people because it is a very multidisciplinary things uh, people con from various discipline they contribute to the information building. So, consult the knowledgeable people to whom is the item or collection significant and remember it also includes the stakeholder and the community who are very important part because they are the caretakers of the heritage. Fourth, explore the context of the item or collection to what context they belong to consider the patterns, development, function, geography and environment. Fifth, analyze and describe the fabric and condition of the item or the collection. Consider nature, materials, design, manufacture, the changes which have been taking place and compare with other examples. This is very important. So, this is the sixth one and the seven. Then identify the relative places and items of collection. What else is the part of the picture? There may be something which can be there can be a connectivity between two or three items or various items in terms of aspects, in terms of importance, in terms of history, in terms of some sort of a, a people's association. And finally, on eighth, assess the significance against the primary and the comparative criteria. After that, in the ninth point, we have to write a succinct statement of significance. This is very important and consider all information gathered, explain how and why the item of the collection is significant and what it means, discuss with others. So, it has to be a very transparent process. And finally, the action, what to do the next list recommendation, policies and task arising. But also I must mention at this stage, this statement of significance is just not inventory. And there, there is a difference between these two. So, we have to know the how to use the criteria. We have seen the statement of significance, we have sort of a summarized that and then we have to understand that how to use the criteria for the implementation and the action stages. Thank you.